G'day, g'day again to the True Footy YouTube channel. I'm joined by Joycey and the content train continues in isolation. Joycey, how are you? Yeah, pretty good. Thanks, Jesse. All right, guys, in today's video, Joycey and I are going to look through all the biggest trades that have happened over the past, you know, I'd say like 12 years going back to the Judd trade. That was the first big trade that I can remember. And we're going to review quickly and see uh, who won the trade. Let's start off with one of the biggest trades to happen uh, in a long, long time, and that's Paddy Dangerfield. Dangerfield left uh, the Crows after spending uh, like five or six seasons there, maybe a bit more. He requested a trade home to Geelong, and for that, Geelong received Dangerfield and pick 50, and Adelaide famously received Dean Gore, pick 9, and pick 28. Pick 9 was used on Wayne Miller. And pick 28 was traded away uh, to get Troy Menzel. So they basically got Dean Gore, Wayne Miller, and Troy Menzel. There's a clear winner out of this this trade, Jesse. It's got to be Geelong. Paddy going to Geelong was always on the cards. Not much Adelaide could have done. I think their hands were pretty tight. They probably got the best they could out of the situation. Looks like Miller could be a decent player. Yeah, unfortunately, Geelong clear winners on that one, Jesse. What about yourself? Yeah, I think you've summarised it pretty well. Uh, Geelong got a Brownlow medalist, I think, in his first season at Geelong, uh, and they obviously went on a premiership tilt. Can you imagine, do you reckon Adelaide would have won the flag in 2017 if you could add a, a Paddy Dangerfield for pretty much no cost to their team? Well, the way they got smashed in the grandy, uh, it wouldn't have mattered if they had Dusty, Fife, and, and Dangerfield all on that side. If Geelong don't win a premiership while Danger's there, then, you know, you could equally argue that Adelaide have done all right out of the deal. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I guess... Uh, for most of these trades, we're not going to have the clear answer. One trade we do have a clear answer on, in my opinion, is the Chris Judd trade. Chris Judd was obviously traded to uh, Carlton. Everyone knows pretty much like exactly what happened, but Judd and pick 46 made their way to Carlton from the Eagles. Pick 46 was Dennis Armfield, uh, and then the Eagles received Josh Kennedy in addition to pick 3 and pick 20. Pick 3 was Chris Maston. And 20 was Tony Knott. So it's basically Judd for Judd and Armfield for Kennedy and Maston. What are your views on this trade? You know, I, I do hate to give credit to West Coast, but I think they played this one pretty well. Interestingly, at the time, I think this would have been the worst news possible for an Eagles fan with everything else going on at the club. But it was a bit of a blessing in disguise. Eagles have won this. Carlton didn't quite get the best out of Judd. I think Eagles probably got a better Judd than Carlton. Although Judd did bring maybe a renewed presence to, to Carlton Football Club. So I definitely wouldn't say that Carlton... Um, lost out too big. Yeah, that's right. I think uh, I think on the basis the Eagles got two uh, premiership players out of it, you kind of think on paper they win. Mind you, Carlton, like you said, got a Brownlow medalist out of it at a time where Carlton were like terrible. So uh, it's that I think they definitely did well out of it. Um, and it was the other decisions around that which probably stopped them um, going further than they did. Another Carlton one here, mate. Brendan Favola. This was a big, big trade at the time, but it's kind of faded into obscurity. Brendan Favola uh, was an absolute star. He kicked 99 goals in 2008. 12 months later, requested a trade to Brisbane. Uh, so Favola and pick 27, which ended up being Callum Bartlett. I don't know if he played a game. Um, he didn't play many if he did. So Favola and Bartlett, basically just Favola, for Lockie Henderson to the Blues and Kane Lucas. What are your impressions on that? Because it kind of seems like a nil-all draw. <laughs> Henderson was, he was a serviceable, serviceable player for Carlton for quite a while until he left for Geelong. Fev, who knows what that could have been at Brisbane. I just wrote down, I think he kicked almost 50 goals from 17 games up there at Brisbane one year. But, you know, you can't you can't give Brisbane the chocolates on on what might have been. So I'm going to go with Carlton on this one. Yep, well said. I agree with that. I was a bit harsh to say nil or draw. Lockie Henderson was a very serviceable, pl serviceable player for him. And Kane Lucas, while he got delisted eventually, um, was at least, you know, a player who played games for them. So you'd, I'd agree, Carlton. Uh, I'll skip ahead for seven years in time for another trade involving a Brownlow medalist. This time it's Tom Mitchell who moved from the Sydney Swans to Hawthorne. Obviously, he was a father-son. Mitchell and 57 got traded for 14 and 52. We'll cancel out the 52 and 57 uh, because I don't think really many, like the actual picks were taken or they were traded away or something. But essentially, it became 14, 
for Tom Mitchell, but essentially it was Will Hayward and it helped upgrade to Ollie Florent. There's not many times, I think, that you can have a go at Sydney. I think generally they're a very well-run and operated club, but Tom Mitchell, he was banging the door down there for games regularly for a good two years before he moved to Hawthorne. And I think Hawks would have been licking their lips. What would Sydney give to have Tom Mitchell there right now. Josh Kennedy, you know, he's he's on the decline. Kieran Jack, he's nowhere near the player. I think he's gone now. You know, Luke Parker's still pretty good. Heaney and Mills probably haven't quite still stepped into that midfield role. I think a lot of Sydney supporters had hopes. You know, they're both great players, but, you know, I see Heaney more as a half forward. Mills still more as a back, genuine midfielders. Although, you know, Will Hayward and Florent, you know, two pretty decent young players as well. So... We're going to have to see how this one plays out over time, I think. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well summarised. You're right. Sydney would love to have Mitchell back. It wasn't quite Mitchell for Florent and Haywood. They probably would have gotten another first rounder instead of Florent. So it was basically Haywood and then the difference between Florent and a Jared Berry. And, you know, Jared Berry might end up better anyway. I like Will Haywood, but you're right. A, a Brownlow medalist who's only, at the moment, I think 26. So, yeah, Hawthorne definitely win there. The next trade I want to talk about is a really interesting one because it happened twice. It was Dane Beams. In 2014 is where it started. He left Collingwood to go to the Brisbane Lions. Beams and 67 made their way to Brisbane. And Brisbane got Jack Crisp. Pick 5, which was Jordan Dugowie. And pick 25, which was then traded for Levi Greenwood. The interesting thing about this trade is then he made his way back to Collingwood like four years later. Brisbane got two first rounders for him. And those two first rounders became Eli Smith and more or less Devon Robertson. It was picked around that range. So to summarize that for you, Joycey, Crisp, Dugowie, and Greenwood for four years of Dane Beams, Eli Smith, and Devon Robertson. I think this one's actually closer than what a lot of people might think. Dugowie and Crisp, absolute guns. Greenwood, he's a good run with player. But, you know, Beams was a really good player for Brisbane there when they didn't have much else, and he was a great leader. Look, if you're asking me which one would I have gone, I guess I would have gone to Goey and Crisp, but I don't think it's a big loss for Brisbane. Yeah, I agree. Well said. Crisp and to Goey on talent is absolutely ridiculous. On the other side of it, I mean, neither of these trades wouldn't have happened in hindsight because, like, Beams went there for, like, um, sympathetic reasons. His dad was crook. So there was nothing really... The the deal was always going to get done, so it's hard to be critical. But if you're just looking on the value there... Four years of beams at a time where Brisbane was struggling was pretty valuable. Um, And obviously the jury's out on Eli Smith and Devin Robinson. So um, too early to call, but I think Collingwood probably got the best value out of that. Although, you know, who knows if Beams is going to play again. 2015, Adam Trelaw made his way from the Giants. Now, Trelaw made his way with pick 28, which was Braden Sire. GWS were compensated pick seven, um, which was Hopper. And 65 was traded away. Um, and then their 2016 first was also included. So it was basically GWS got Jacob Hopper, a pick 65, which I think was traded away, and a 2016 first rounder, which helped them get Tim Taranto. So uh, it wasn't quite picked on its own, but they used it to get picked too. So Hopper and Taranto for Trelaw and Sire. What do you what do you think about that? I might even say this one is a win-win for what Collingwood needed at the time. They needed a player that could come in and have immediate impact. And there's no doubt Trelaw has been that player. He famously turned down Richmond because he said that their list he didn't think was talented enough. But, you know, Collingwood's a pretty talented list. It's probably not the worst call. I think that one's probably a win-win, Jesse, if I'm honest. It's like you said, like, Collingwood needed a bit mature talent. Mind you, Taranto and Hopper on talent could easily surpass him. So wait and see, I guess, because GWS could be big winners out of that. But, I mean, if Collingwood go one step further and win the flag, then they're definitely going to be vindicated for that. The next one is a very interesting one, Joycey. 2009, few people will actually remember Shane Mumford played for Geelong, uh, but he was traded to the Swans from the Cats for pick 28. And I don't know how many people have actually reflected on this. Pick 28 became Mitch Duncan. So Sydney got got 79 games out of Mumford and a flag, and Geelong got 203 games out of Mitch Duncan and a flag. So how do you think this one went? You know, Big Mummy is a very, very good player at periods there for Sydney and has become, you know, he was an even better player at GWS for a few years there. Look, if you're looking at what each club got out of those players, then you probably lean towards Geelong, yes. But, you know, Mummy, he was a great player on his day. 
I uh, don't think it's as clear cut as what some people might think. I agree with you. I was kind of leading towards win-win on this. It was a very, very good deal in hindsight. The next one is a trade you sort of alluded to before when you mentioned Josh Kennedy from Hawthorne. Um, at the time, father-son made his way to Sydney, and these two clubs have a weird habit of trading father-sons to each other. But Josh Kennedy and Ben McGlynn made, his way, made their way to Sydney. Now, this one's interesting because I think definitely Sydney's won here because, you know, Josh Kennedy was a near Brownlow medalist for an extended period of time. Ben McGlynn was a good forward. But 39, 46, and 70 made their way to Hawthorne, which is a crap deal on paper, right? But the interesting thing is I thought 46 were Ben Stratton and pick 70 was Matt Suckling. So two pretty good players at a time where Hawthorne were, you know, about to launch a you know, three-peat winning side. It's not a bad deal in hindsight, is it? Not a bad deal at all. Suckling, he won two grandies, I think. Stratton, he won three. But, you know, no one can argue how good Josh Kennedy was on his day. Yeah, I'm a big supporter of Hawthorne in the sense that everything they touch turns to gold and they've been brilliant. I don't want to give him too much credit for this because I think trading Josh Kennedy away is a blunder and McGlynn was a good player too. I just think they got lucky in the sense that they also had a good draft that year taking Stratton and suckling it 46 and 70. It's a more even trade than perhaps it once looked. 2011 also involves Hawthorne. They're absolutely all over this video because they've traded in a lot of good players. But Hawthorne, it, well, they traded in a player, Jack Gunston, who few again would remember, used to play for Adelaide. Hawthorne got Gunston, pick 53, which is Alex Woodward, and pick 71, uh, which was traded away. Adelaide received 24, 46, and 64. 24 was more or less, it gets messy because it was traded away, but it was more or less Sam Kerridge, who they took at 27. Your cousin, Nicholas Joyce, not really your cousin, uh, and 64, Cam Ellis Yolman. So basically, it was Gunston for Cam Ellis Yolman. Yeah, this is a clear, clear, Jesse. We've been going 50-50 on a on quite a lot, but this is a clear win. Uh, 347 goals from 179 games. He's arguably been the best, like, medium-sized forward in the competition for the decade. Clear winner, Hawthorne. Yep, well said, I agree. Jack Gunson is a hugely talented player. 2013, we'll skip ahead to again. I'm all over the timeline here, but Collingwood. Trades with GWS again. This time, Taylor Adams for Heath Shaw, a direct swap. Again, uh, this I think this is closer than what some people might say. Taylor Adams, super talented player, but Heath Shaw, he, he seems to have really matured since he's gone to GWS. He's be, I think he's been a little underrated at GWS. You know, this is a really tough one. I think, again, you could, you could argue it's a win-win. Um, GWS had midfield talent to spare so they could pretty easily afford Taylor Adams going to get someone experienced in. I'm either leaning towards Collingwood win or a draw, so somewhere in between that. Yeah, good call. You talked me into it with your well-summarized answer. I was leaning towards Collingwood as well because I just think Adams is in his prime uh, versus Heath Straw. He's played 134 games, but you know, will he be part of a premiership side? Maybe he's still got time. But like you said, GWS had midfield talent coming in there of their ass. They still do. Um, and Taylor Adams wasn't really needed, and they probably needed an experienced head. So you're right. Probably a very even trade there. 2012. I don't think you might agree that this is a necessarily a big trade, but I kind of think it was at, at the time. And this is Sharad Wellingham going from Collingwood to West Coast. Now, Wellingham kind of faded into obscurity because people don't think he was actually that good. But he was a very good part of that 2010 Collingwood side. So when he actually made his way to West Coast, it was kind of a big deal. This one's really interesting for me, mostly because they were traded for pick 18, with which Collingwood took Brody Grundy. Unfortunately for you, Jesse, there's a clear winner. Brody Grundy, I think he's the best ruckman I've ever seen, and you know how much I love Aaron Sandilands. Wellingham, you know, he was an interesting one. He was, you were right, he was a pretty decent player at Collingwood there. He kind of switched roles to a more halfback, third tall defender sort of thing at West Coast, which I don't think played to his strengths. Had a few bad injuries. I think he fell off a trampoline or something like that. Um, things just didn't go his way and Collingwood were clear winners of this one. I agree with you. The only thing that was for Sharon Wellingham and the Eagles here is that he had one very, very good season in 2015 when the Eagles made a way to the made his, their way to the grand final. He played as that halfback role you mentioned, and he played really well for that one season. So if the Eagles had won a flag 
they probably would have justified that trade because they were trying to top up for that flag. But of course, Brody Grundy must be one of the best, um, yeah, probably the, one of the greatest ruckmen we've ever seen. So I agree with you. Let's have a look at another top up player here. Brian Lake. He was originally a Bulldog. People forget that because he became a triple premiership player at the Hawks. Uh, so it was Brian Lake plus 27, which was then used to help secure Jed Anderson for Hawthorne. So it was Lake and Anderson. For the Bulldogs, they received Nathan Rovat. Well, it was pick 21, taking uh, Nathan Rovat and 43, which I don't think they ended up using. It. So then you look at the Dogs' next pick, which was a father-son lucky hunter. Probably can't give them credit for that in this trade. So mm. Brian Lake and Jed Anderson for Nathan Rovat. Is that a smashing or what? Yeah, absolutely smashing. Great player at Hawks there for a few years, Brian Lake. I agree, I agree. Let's have a look at another Hawthorne one, another top-up player for them. They traded in big boy McAvoy from St. Kilda, and the trade was Shane Savage and pick 18, uh, which became Blake Akers. So in summary, Shane Savage and Blake Akers for McAvoy. Did the Saints have any argument that they won this trade, or is it clearly Hawthorne as well? Yeah, I think this one's pretty clearly Hawthorne, unfortunately, for Saints fans. He's been a very good player for Hawthorne. At the time, I think Saints fans actually would have been pretty happy with this. You know, I remember Saint Shane Savage burst onto the scene at Hawthorne, um, and he looked to be a really good young player. And he's, he's not a bad player, don't get me wrong, but um, I don't think he's the player maybe we thought he was going to be. Yeah, you've got to say that um, Hawthorne won this one. Yeah, I agree. Definitely hands down, I would say. Uh, let's have a look at an interesting trade. It's not necessarily a big marquee player trade, um, but it was an interesting one in hindsight. This is Melbourne and GWS trading for Dom Tyson. So Dom Tyson was like pick four or something back in the day and you know considered a good talent, but he made his way to Melbourne. Uh, so it was Dom Tyson and pick nine for... GWS is pick 2, 20, and 72. I don't know if the other picks were even used by their trade uh, by their clubs, but I think we can simplify it. it. It's essentially Dom Tyson and Christian Salem for Josh Kelly. Christian Salem's a decent player. Dom Tyson kind of faded into obscurity, went to North. I don't even know if he's going to get a game this year. I actually don't know. Josh Kelly for Christian Salem. I do you agree that DEs could really use a Josh Kelly right now? Yeah, they they stuffed up with this one. You know, I do remember Dom Tyson. I think he looked to be the goods at the time. He was he's a pretty good ball magnet, Dom Tyson. Like he can get possessions, but um, don't compare him and Salem with uh, Josh Kelly, unfortunately. Let's have a look at a few Gold Coast trades here. And there was two in particular, two or three, I think it was in the same off-season that really burned them. And uh, the, you could say that a few, about a few off-seasons. But let's have a look at Dion Prestia first. Prestia made his way from the Gold Coast Suns to Richmond, uh, along with pick 24, which was then helped to uh, which helped secure Caddy as well for them. So it was kind of like a double-barreled trade here. Gold Coast received... Pick six, which was Jack Scrimshaw, who became a spud and went to Hawthorne. And then a second rounder in 2017, which they basically gave the Eagles for free. So Prestia and half of Josh Caddy for Scrimshaw. Who wins this one, Joycey? Look, I think it's pretty obvious that Richmond won. Um, I think similar to the first trade you mentioned, though, I think it was always going to be tough to hang on to Prestia. If him for pick six, when I, when I analysed it like that, I don't actually think that's too bad of a deal. For Gold Coast, unfortunately, you know, Scrimshaw hasn't, hasn't turned out like Gold Coast would like, so you got to say Richmond. Yep, exactly right. This one, this next one's a little bit more even. It was the same off-season. Jager O'Meara, of course, traded uh, himself to Hawthorne. Um, pick 10 uh, was the trade, as well as a 2017 second rounder. Again, it was one of those ones Gold Coast just gave West Coast for very, very little value. So we're lo basically looking at uh, O'Meara for technically Jack Bowes, but though he was an academy pick, I'm going to say it was more Jay Gromira versus Will Brody. How do you reflect on this one? You probably lean towards Hawthorne again, no Gold Coast hands were tied. And I don't think Brody is actually going to be a, too bad of a player for Gold Coast by the look, so long as they can hang on to him. O'Meara, though, he's he's class, you know, different level. So you'd, just, you'd lean towards Hawthorne, but, you know, who knows? Um, O'Meara, you know, might not play too many more games. He's... Pretty injury prone. I'll go Hawks win for now, but we'll see what happens in the next 10 years. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, Momira at the moment looks like a 
pretty good, I'd say, B-plus player. Maybe potential to reach that A grade at some point. Um, it's interesting. I feel like Will Brody's on the same talent pathway. Like, I think he could be a good B-plus player one day. Um, so I, I, do, I can see this becoming a win-win, but I think, like you say, on points right now, Hawthorne win that trade. Let's have a look at Devin Smith now. Um, this was the following year. Obviously made his way from GWS to Essen and kind of the victim of that talent squeeze at GWS. Probably wanted to come home anyway. Devin Smith, along with pick 25 and a 2018 second rounder, went to GW, uh, went to Essen and GWS uh, got pick 11, which was Aiden Bonner and a future third. So to simplify that, it was Smith and 25, which helped them get Stringer for basically Aiden Bonner. So, again, I think Gito West got pillaged here. Do you agree? Yeah, Essendon have done really well. Two of their better players um, in Smith and Stringer. So, yeah, you got to go with the Bombers on this one, I think. Yep, clearly. Um, another Bombers win here, I think, as well. Jake Stringer, if we have a look at that trade, the same offseason. That 25 um, made its way to the Bulldogs along with 35 for Stringer. I don't. Th- I couldn't see clearly who they picked with this. I'm pretty sure that's roughly what they paid for Josh Shackey. So the Bulldogs traded Josh Shackey for Stringer. Is there any chance the Bulldogs make up ground on this trade or did they just lose out completely? There is chance to um, to make up the difference, but at the moment, Essendon are a long way in front, I'd say. Stringer has been a really good player for Bombers, although I think that the Dogs were kind of forced into a trade. If you read about the rumours and stuff that were going on at the Doggies at the time, it sounds like that one was bound to happen. Yeah, exactly right. Well said. Um, they Their hands were a bit tied, and um, yeah, they there's not too much they could have done about that in hindsight. Joycey, let's finish this video with three Adelaide trades from that uh, disastrous 2017 off-season. Jake Lever left the club, uh, along with pick 35, which became Harrison Petty and a future third. And Adelaide received pick 10, which they then traded for Bryce Gibbs or partially for Bryce Gibbs, 2018 round one pick, which became Chase Jones. So Lever and Petty for half of Bryce Gibbs and Chase Jones. Does Adelaide have any chance of making up this trade, or do you think Melbourne are the clear winners? Um, I think for now Melbourne are the winners, yes. But yeah, Chase Jones, um, pretty young player. I don't think Lever's been quite as good at Melbourne as he was at Adelaide. So, you know, we're going to have to give this one some time. For now, I'm going to go Melbourne. I agree. We're sort of in the territory now where it's a little bit early to call. I don't know. I haven't seen too much of Chase Jones. He doesn't really seem to be progressing maybe as well as the Crows had hoped. But again, this was a trade they didn't really have much control over. Let's look at the Gibbs trade now. This one, I reckon, is horrendous for the Crows. Um, Gibbs, uh, pick 77, a 2018 second rounder and a third rounder made their way to Adelaide. Carlton got pick 10 and 16. 10 was Lockie O'Brien. Pick 16, it gets muddy because they downgraded it, but one of those picks they took was Tom DeConning. So let's just say, uh, to summarize it, Gibbs for Lockie O'Brien and Tom DeConning. I can't really see Adelaide coming out of this with a win. What about you? No, unfortunately, Gibbs really hasn't had the impact to Adelaide. I think they would have been after. Yeah, there's not too much more you can say about that. Um, I think Carlton, they did well to get those picks, although I'm not completely sold either of those two players are, are going to be, you know, regulars um, for a long time for Carlton. So, you know, it could this one might be a lose-lose for now, um, but I'll go... Um, I'll go Carlton as the winners, yeah. Yeah, at least the Carlton players have time on their side um, and, you know, Gibbs is probably on his last legs to say the least. Let's finish off with another Adelaide one. Again, too early to call, but this one's really interesting. Charlie Cameron was basically swapped for Darcy Fogarty. Uh, Look, unfortunately for Adelaide, yeah, they've copped a big loss on this one so far. Early days, but so far, Charlie Cameron, he's just been absolutely elite in terms of small forwards um, since he's gone to the Lions. Darcy Fogarty, you know, he could end up being a decent player. Um, he's like a very, he's a big unit for a, for a second year um, or third year. But look, you got to go with the Lions for now on this one. Yeah, well said. It's hard to really justify anyone over Charlie Cameron. He's an absolute star. All right, Joycey. Well, I think we've just about done as many trades this week and possibly have time for. I'm sure there's heaps out there that, you know, fans of clubs are listening to and be like, oh, you didn't mention him. But uh, we'll put it to you guys. 
let us know in the comments a what you thought of our summaries and if you agreed with us and b if you can think of any other big trades or perhaps really good sort of even trades let us know in the comments joycey it's been good having you thanks for coming on we'll see you next time yeah cheers jesse